Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scotty G, back at it again. This time we're going to talk about the number one thing that I see in happy couples. You see relationship gurus all over the internet, talking for hours on podcasts, dating coaches with pretty faces and big biceps selling their 20 skills to work on as a couple, right? Um, they sell these packages for hundreds of dollars. Y'all do you. I don't judge. I'm a fan of capitalism, but this package that I'm selling here, I'll give this one to you all for free. Today, we will talk about the quality that I personally think is the most important. First of all, why should you listen to me? Been married 20 years happily, got two amazing kids. I've been in relationship coaching for about five years approximately at this point. I've been around plenty of happy couples. I've been pl around plenty of unhappy couples, and I'm a scientist by nature, so I'm an observer. I love human behavior. It fascinates me, and it's been something that I've been interested in my whole life. So that being said, what's the most important quality in happy couples based on my experience and plenty of relationship material? Drum roll, quick conflict resolution. That's the number one. If you can get over arguments quickly, you're going to solve most of your relationship problems just based on that because conflict happens in relationships. The quicker you get over your problems, the better. At that point, you're going to have arguments that produce results. You're going to have arguments that matter. You're going to get over them quickly. You're going to voice your opinion. She's going to voice your, her opinion, and you move on. That's life. That's the way things are soulmates don't exist, you are going to have conflict within a relationship eventually. It's going to happen no matter what you do. If you can have an argument that has a happy ending and you can have those quickly, that's the number one quality that you need in a happy relationship, period, in my opinion. A lot of these other things that people talk about, of course it's important, but in my opinion, this is the most important. Quick conflict resolution. How do I know this? My wife and I used to have fights a lot, but that's not the key. A lot of times what would happen is we would have the same argument and it would last for days. Things would come up. I'd be bullheaded, be a little bit stubborn. She would be a little bit stubborn. Essentially, that conflict would last for a couple of days and we just wouldn't get over it. Well, over time, we learned what we what's important, what's bad, what's good. And what's really bad and what's really good, when you have that kind of experience in a relationship, you realize that the small little conflicts that you have in life aren't normally worth having. So you just kind of just deal with it. But when the big stuff comes up, you are not afraid of voicing your opinion. She's not afraid of voicing her opinion. You meet in the middle, compromise, boom, conflict over, all is well. So I say conflict happens. Well, when you go through serious conflict in a relationship, when you go through some serious problems, all the other little problems fade into dust. You realize what's important, what's not important, what's worth an argument, and what's not. That just happens in relationships. That is, That just happens with life. You live and you learn. You see what's good. You see what's bad. You got to have the bad times to appreciate the good ones. And news at 11, conflict is how you grow as a couple. That's how you grow over time together, not apart. 90% of personal growth comes from pain. The other 10% comes from knowledge, learning. Conflict is necessary to set boundaries around the relationship, where she can operate, where you can operate. The conflict is what sets those bookends. This side is acceptable. This side is acceptable. Outside that region is not acceptable. You have to have conflict to set those boundaries. One of the founders in relationship material and studies was the Gottman Institute, John Gottman. They came up with the golden relationship rule. I cite it often. It's very important. It's five to one. Five positive interactions to one negative one is the ratio that you're looking for. So if you have too much conflict in your relationship, 
it's going to end if that's if it's a one to one. If you don't have enough conflict in your relationship, you grow apart and the relationship ends. So, for instance, you have a 15 to one ratio, five positive interactions to one negative one. That's critical. That's how you grow as a couple. That's how you stay happy. You stay satisfied. You stay safe. You stay comfortable. That's that's how this works. So how do you quickly resolve an argument? Let's talk about that real quick. Number one, the argument needs to have a purpose. Just blowing up on your spouse, your woman, your man will only push them farther away from you. Just blowing up on them for no reason, that doesn't work long term. If you're having a bad day, if you recognize that you have a bad day, (laughs) just chill Take a couple exits down the interstate while you're coming home to collect yourself before you get home so you can come home as refreshed as possible. You have to recognize that you're not in a good mood first and then deal with that mood so you can come home a little bit more fresh or actually coming into a room more refreshed. So if you do have an argument, Use that argument to hear what he or she really wants in the relationship and address what you expect of them. All right. Resolve the argument as best as you can the first time it comes up so it doesn't keep coming up constantly, constantly, constantly. If you have uh, an argument that keeps coming up, that is an obvious boundary that needs to be set within the relationship and you need to resolve it. Sometimes that requires more pain. That requires more effort. Well, If you continue having the same argument in a relationship, you're going to have a one-to-one positive to negative interaction and you are not going, the relationship is not going to go well. So let's talk about a couple different scenarios for, for men and I'll talk about women after. So men, listen to me. It's about safety for her. She needs to feel safe with you. That is huge. If she doesn't feel safe with you, she's not going to be open and honest to you. So if she feels comfortable about talking to you directly and honestly, she's going to tell you more directly and honestly what she wants. She's not going to be as passive. If you lose your temper often, safety goes out the window. She's not going to feel safe with you, so she's going to be more passive. She's going to walk on eggshells, and she's not going to be honest about what she really wants wants from you or honest about what needs to happen in the relationship. Stay calm. You can be stern without being ugly. Look into stoicism if you're if you don't know what I'm talking about. You can be calm, cool and collected and be masculine at the same time. It can be done. Don't lose your temper and don't be passive. You're looking for that middle ground. And that's stoicism. Once you have established that, she's going to feel safer and she's going to be more open to you and you can resolve conflict a lot faster. And listen to me on this one, fellas. Nothing diffuses an argument faster than making her laugh. Humor is your friend. Humor doesn't always work since you want a resolution to the argument, but it sure as heck will decrease the heat a couple thousand degrees so you can actually talk. Okay. Making her laugh will diffuse so many arguments. Huge. So that's guys. Let's talk about the ladies now. There's one quality you need to know about guys, ladies. Men aren't good at arguing with women for the most part. We're not good at it. We don't like fighting with our women. We're not really built for that. We're built for for physically fighting with other men, but we can't do that with our spouse or a woman. We can't do that. So we don't like it. It makes us very uncomfortable, most guys. So what you think is oblivious behavior could mean that they're just avoidant, okay? They're just avoiding that fight because we don't like fighting with our women. We're not, we're not built for it. You're much better at fighting, and it's an unfair fight when it comes to verbal conflicts in a marriage, okay? And we know that. We, we know we're not as good uh, about verbally fighting with our woman. We are built to provide and protect, and it goes against our programming, essentially. So that's one of the reasons why when a, a fight starts, a guy will have a tendency to drop a grenade into the room and, and just leave. 
okay, because that's that's a passive way of having an argument. You know, women are guilty of that too, but in my opinion, I think guys are more prone to that kind of thing because we don't like fighting with our women. It just it's just part of our nature and it's part of our programming. Most guys, generally speaking here. Men like it when it's calm. And honestly, some guys need to be reminded of certain things. Okay. Some guys are more emotionally connected than others. Emotional intelligence is something that uh, I talk about often with my coaching clients uh, for men and women, but men for, for sure have more of an issue with that than women do. Stay calm in the heat of the argument. Try not to say anything stupid. That actually goes for men and women. Women have a tendency to be a little bit more verbal. So sometimes something can come up and something can come, come out that you didn't necessarily mean. And a lot of guys are guilty of this fact where sometimes you just want to vent and guys just want to fix. Sometimes you just want to talk about it and you get annoyed that he just wants to be in fix it mode. I'm totally guilty of that myself. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, I will ask my wife, do you need me to listen to you or do you need me to fix it? If I'm confused. <laughs> okay. Sometimes that just happens in relationships and directly asking her, that's not out of bounds. And frankly, it will probably save you a lot of arguments. Guilty as charged. Pick your battles. Do you really care about what the color of the bed sheets are? Just for instance, is it worth that kind of a fight? Is it worth it to bring that kind of stuff up? Identify exactly what you want from him. Men have a tendency to be emotionally dense. So you, a lot of times you have to spell it out. Just being passive or being kind of an end around with, a, with, with something that you need from him. For instance, taking out the trash. Tell him to take out the trash. Okay, you can do that in a respectful manner and without picking a fight. If he doesn't listen to you, that's cause for a, a conflict and an argument. That's okay. As long as it produces a result, it's worth it. If you keep having the same argument over and over, you're going to have a one-to-one -one ratio within your relationship and you're going to struggle. So we've talked about how guys don't like to fight with their ladies. Staying calm, pick your battles. This next one, number four for, for you ladies, try to make him your hero. Activate his hero gene. That's number four. I can't stress that enough. Men have a hero gene within us where we want to help you. We want to be your Superman. It's very, very prominent when it comes to your kids. But when it comes to your spouse, your wife, you want to be the guy that opens the jar for her, saves the day, can actually reach the top of the, the cupboard and, and do something for her. If you can reach the top of the cupboard and he's there, why not just ask him, can you grab this for me real quick? You're activating his hero gene when you do that. And he, he's, per, he's programmed to want to do that for you. So activate it. Like I said, with the opening of the jar, if you can open it, great. But if you can activate his hero gene just by having him open a jar, win-win. And ladies, you don't have to be strong and independent all the time. It's okay to let him help you. He is programmed to do that. That's what we do. Provide and protect. If you activate that within him, it will make him feel more masculine. And you'll create that, that polarity within the relationship. Ladies, you have no idea what kind of power you have over a man when you do this. If you activate his hero gene, he, is be, he, he will feel more masculine and he will do more for you at that point. If you just constantly complain about what he's not doing for you, he's probably going to start avoiding you. And that goes for you too, guys. If you do the same thing, if you constantly criticize her, she's going to have a tendency to avoid you because why would she stick around a dude that's not nice? And why would a guy stick around a, a woman that's not nice? Kind of common sense, right? And ladies, if all else fails, lift your shirt. <laughs> lift your shirt. Make him laugh. Humor goes both ways, okay? If you could put a smile on your spouse's face, 
you're going to have a tendency to diffuse an argument, period. So if you're liking this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Come on into my free Facebook group, Marriage Isn't Dead, private group. Got a lot of people in there. That's where I, I put out exclusive content for people. It's free to play, no charge. Visit the website, marriageisn'tdead.com. You'll find all my links to all the podcasts and all of my material at that point. So in closing, quick conflict management will separate the couples that can make it long term to those who don't period. That's the common thread that I found in relationships that work and relationships that fail. If you can get over an argument quickly and move on, you can set the boundaries within the relationship very quickly and you can grow together plain and simple. So try to have arguments that have purpose, that produce a result, and you are amicable at the end of the argument. Plain and simple. You could have a lifelong relationship if that's the case. I'm convinced of that. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.